fellow people, I'm Ginny Metherill and I am a fourth generation witch. I'm often asked by people what they need in order to start practicing witchcraft. And to this, I'm invariably, I say, oh, you need nothing, you need absolutely nothing because it's just movement of energies, that's all witchcraft is. However, I think I might be wrong because tools are actually really helpful. So today I want to discuss the basic witch toolkit. Although witchcraft is merely the movement of energy around, tools can help facilitate this. So although technically you don't need tools really, practically they're really useful. So we're going to look at what witchcraft tools you should use when you're starting your practice. And if you already are a seasoned witch, I would love to know your thoughts on this. So do leave me a comment below. So the first tool we're going to look at is the tool of smoke. Now this is my favorite and possibly the most important for me because I use smoke in so many different ways. So I normally use a joystick and I've got a plain old joystick here. It smells musky to me. All my joysticks have got a bit muddled up recently so I have no idea what flavor they are. However, essentially it doesn't really matter, especially to start Every person who has attended my coven meetings will know that I use smoke at the very outset of those meetings in order to check out what is happening psychically and within each person's aura at the meeting. So we do a group cleansing session to start with to ensure that, you know, the rituals that we are about to perform have no negative energy ruining their outcome and changing the actual spell itself. But I like to use a joystick mainly, only because it is easy to light, it's cheap, and I can get a good feeling from the smoke. I can psychically connect to other people who are using a joystick and see what's happening within their auras. So it's quite a good tool for the advanced witch as well as the baby witch. The witches, of course, might be using their joystick to do a cleansing ceremony or smudging ceremony, as you might say. I don't wish to offend any indigenous Americans. We're not stealing your ritual. Traditional witches, such as myself, has been using smoke cleansing ceremonies for generations, probably as long as you. However, we just are appropriating the word smudge. So I always recommend to start around the head because heads and chests carry the main sources of energy that you might pick up. You can use a joystick, you can use an incense. I have, oh look, I have a very old sage burner here. It's almost dead. It keeps falling apart and coming up into bits. I must get a new one, but I like to buy, you know, um, sage grown in a polytunnel in Devon and not that that's picked wild in the American desert. However, white sage, marvellous stuff really helps your psychic development. Joysticks are of course nice and cheap and easily available and so this I think is my number one toolkit for a witch. They also smell really quite lovely. I gave my daughter some jasmine ones. The whole upstairs of my house now smells of jasmine. Delicious! My second a witch's toolkit is without a shadow of a doubt a bowl. So I have this copper bowl and copper is the traditional witch's bowl medium. That's because copper, if you, can, if you feel it, it often has an electrical charge. So it feels like it's buzzing slightly against your hand. It is naturally antibacterial. It naturally defends against negative energies and is highly conductive, not just for electricity, but for your magic, which is sort of a form of electricity because it's energy. Copper conducts energy and that is why I have a copper bowl. However, the bowl is just a medium to ensure that my spells are all in one place and I can send that energy out into the air. So you don't need a copper bowl, but they are rather lovely. I use the copper bowl for burning spells to release them for mixing potions within them 
and burning potions and burning bits of the potions within them. Round shape is a predisposed circle and so you can empower your spells using the bowl as a natural circle of energy. My copper bowl, as you can see, it's a bit beaten up, but it came from a flea market and it was only about three or four pounds. Copper bowls are rather unfashionable as home decked pieces at the moment, so you can pick them up pretty cheap. I personally think that every witch should have some form of divinatory card deck and I particularly like just the tarot. However, tarot aren't the only cards that I read. I read all sorts from playing cards, which is where I first learnt to divine the cards and their true meaning, to angel cards, spirit animal guide cards and other forms of oracle cards. I have to say I do have a soft spot for the original playing cards as because this is how I learned to read cards. Watching my mother, she was a great playing card advocate. My great grandmother was the one who really liked the tarot, but you know, she lived in the 1920s. Tarot was big, huge in the 1920s and so that's what she read. So I think you should get a pack of cards. I have loads because when I'm reading for clients, I'm often just searching for clues. So the more definitive answers I've got within a larger selection of cards, the better clue that I can find, which will help me gain insight into my client and what they need and what lies in their future. When reading the cards, I often like to get confirmation of my intuitive reaction to what those cards are saying. And for that, I will use a pendulum. And this is my latest acquisition, Isn't It Beautiful? Made by Tibetan monks, I believe. Uh, it's probably made by, you know, Sam down the road. But actually, if I wanted to find out, I could just do some psychometry on it, which is reading objects, where you hold an object in your hand and read it to see what its past was. Pendulums are a binary system and so you get a yes or a no answer and this is really good when trying to confirm whether you're right or you're wrong about something. Baby witches often don't have the confidence to trust in their own instincts and this is one of the things that I like to build in my clients when I'm teaching them witchcraft, how to trust your own instincts. And a pendulum is brilliant at adding to this because you get a yes or a no. I mean, pendulums later on, you'll get a maybe and a I don't know response, so they're not quite so binary. But to start with, they can be used as a binary system. And for that, I adore them. I have hundreds of pendulum. I thought I'd show you a few. So this pendulum, this pendulum here, so you can see it's a very, it's very dark blue and I've forgotten what stone it is, but I use this very much for looking at the past. It's very good for telling me what has gone before. This pendulum, which has a snake wrapped around it, if you can see it, and it's made of amethyst, is very good at protection and healing, personal protection and personal healing. So that's what I use it for. It's beautiful, isn't it? I love this pendulum. I particularly like this one as well. This pendulum is very good at finding lost things. I then lost it, so I couldn't find anything with it. Um, it is actually a man-made pendulum made of glass, so it's, um, yeah, it's just blue-coloured glass, but it's got a lovely, gentle energy to it. The reason why pendulums have differing special abilities is because each energy from each stone has a different vibrational attraction to a different subject. Hence why this is very good at finding lost objects. I personally use this one for everyday work, which is a lovely, beautiful pendulum. And I'll put its video up here for you because it does talk about the rock spirit fairy, which it is attached to. And so I get extra special help from this pendulum because it's not just my instinct that it's tuning into, but also a member of the Fae. I don't think I could really get by as well as I do without my pendulum. And so for that reason, this is my most important piece in a witchcraft toolkit. This will change for each individual, though some people just don't get on with pendulums. I, however, love them. 
And finally, the last basic witchcraft kit that I would recommend that you have in your tool bag at all times is the humble candle. Candles can be used to send your spells out. Candles can be used to set circles. Candles can be used to purify and cleanse. And candles can be used to bring light into dark situations. So I always have a few candles hanging around the bottom of my bag somewhere. What do you use? I would love to know. You know, we all have different basic craft equipment and what's your favourite? Yours might not be for mine and it would be really helpful to everyone if you could leave a comment below so we can read what you think is best. Otherwise I do hope you enjoyed this video. Do go to Patreon if you want to look at the coven meeting details and other one-to-one -one services. Do please like and subscribe because it really helps my channel and I will see you in a few days. Thank you.